So I have uh, Sam Sorba with me. She's an actor, a model, uh, all, does all kinds of things. And now she's, uh, well, she's been in homeschooling for quite a long time, but now she's getting to speak into this issue as millions of uh, Americans all across the country are having to, to step in as homeschoolers. So can you tell me a little bit about, um, about your history with homeschooling and how you became such an advocate for it? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, so my son went to first and second grade at a very good elementary school. In fact, we chose to move there because of the schools. And in second grade, um, in first grade, it was fine. But in second grade, things started going downhill. And we had a very troubled classroom. We had five disciplinary issue children in the classroom all together with the other 25 kids. And I just wasn't happy with the way things were going. Um, there are a couple stories. I wrote a book called "There Your Kids," and I tell a couple of these stories. And um, I don't, I don't hold the teacher to blame, although there were certain things that she did that probably could have been handled better. Um, I go into all of that in the book, but eventually, I just realized that my gosh, I mean, I could fail at educating my child and still come out ahead of what the school was doing. And so, in third grade we decided to home educate for the fall semester. I only took on the fall. I was like, I'm only gonna do the fall. And, uh, and then at, at Christmas, I reevaluated. I reevaluated almost right away. I just found it so liberating and so much fun uh, to be that involved with my kids. And I realized through the course of this that the school really ends up robbing parents of, of a deeper relationship with their children. And through that, and then through through some trial and error, and you know, I did put my kids back into a little school, a hybrid situation for six weeks, and that didn't last. And I took them back out again. And um, I tell all those stories in the book, and I just realized that oh my gosh, I was absolutely called to home educate, um, and it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's just the most phenomenal. We worked really hard to have our children, so. Mm -hmm. When I, when I realized what I had been ready to sacrifice, and I say ready to sacrifice because we're all sort of taught that you send your kids to school. That's what you do yeah. because they need to have that education, you know. Um, when, I, when I started to realize what I, was, what I had been about to sacrifice, um, that, then that just became the impetus for me to write the book. And the book is basically, um, I have it here. It's called "There Your Kids: An Inspirational Journey from Self Doubter to Homeschool Advocate." I was a self doubter. I didn't think that I could do it, mm -hmm. uh, and it took a, it took about two two and a half years for me to learn that, in fact, no, not only can you do it, you're perfectly situated to do it because you're their mom, mm -hmm. and um, you know the number one determinant for educational or for academic achievement is parental involvement. That ought to tell you something. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so after that, I just wrote the book and then I've been homeschooling ever since. And we've, we've just, it's, it's part of our family. It's part of our lifestyle choice. It's, um, it's an incredible choice to make. And now we have the whole nation doing it. And yeah. I'm just trying to encourage them because I know what it feels like to think that you're completely inept and inadequate and it's an awful feeling. Um, but that's the feeling that you kind of need to have because that's a good feeling to have because what happens is that affords you the ability to go on a, a journey of discovery. Heaven mm. forbid that you think you know what you're doing in a yeah. sense, right? Uh, so, so let's get started on that, dis on that journey of discovery. And you know, if you don't have the answers for your kids, that's awesome because then they will be able to see you in action finding answers. And we wanna teach our kids how to find answers because yeah. we don't wanna cripple them like the rest of us have been, in a sense, crippled thinking that we're inadequate. We're not inadequate. We just need to be encouraged to go and do and try and make an effort. And, you know, this, this nation was built on home educated people. It was yeah. their idea and, and built on the entrepreneurial spirit. So let's put the entrepreneurial spirit back into our education. So what do you have to say maybe to the, because there are going to be a lot of Americans right now who, it's one thing to plan for homeschooling and to plan to move in that direction. And another thing to wake up on Monday morning and, 
oh no, schools are closed. This is the only option. So what word of encouragement do you have maybe for the parents who, like you said, do feel inept and are overwhelmed and are trying to juggle learning to work from home and trying to, trying to juggle their own anxiety and stress over health and taking care of their families. And now on top of that, having to teach their kids, what's, what's one like breath of fresh air you can give them like, okay, step back. It's going to be okay. Well, if you go to the coronavirus homeschooling.com yeah. website, which is the website that I'm here to talk about primarily, uh, you will, you will see right on the front page, take a deep breath. You've got this and we're yeah. here to help. And so we have this resource for parents. So it's, um, it's basically soup to nuts, K through five right now, six through 12 is coming imminently any moment, uh, but K through five right now. And in your, in your email inbox, Every day you get a full curriculum, which is, includes an agenda, includes a schedule, because I know we need our schedules, right? We're, yeah. we're so trained by that bell. The schedule, all of the, all of the resources that you need to teach your children at home, and some instructions for you on best practices and stuff. There's also a really fabulous uh, uh, Facebook community that has gathered to answer people's questions and to offer mm -hmm. suggestions and and just come alongside parents. Um, the thing that I want to say to parents is I know that you've just been dumped into this and you're like, oh my gosh, this too? I, we're already dealing with so much, right? Yeah. But it's kind of like baptism by fire and you have a fantastic opportunity right now. And so I'm encouraging parents to embrace it and, and understand, look, you've given up a lot, but, you've, but, but part of what you've given up is you're not commuting anymore. That's found mm -hmm. time. That's time that you can spend with your kids time that you never had before because you had to get out the door and get, get on to work, right? And yeah. there are other opportunities in there. And, and parents, you know, dropping your kids off at school, you don't have to drop them off. You don't have to sit in the pickup lines anymore. You've got opportunities in there to recreate your life, at least for this season. Now, it's possible, and I'm already hearing anecdotally different accounts of parents who are saying, you know, I don't think I want to go back to the schools because I'm really enjoying this time with my kid. And maybe there's a way that I can get it done. And I know that American workers are going, some of them are going, you know, I didn't think that I could get that much stuff done from the home, but I see that I can. Maybe I'll go to a hybrid week. Um, so I think we're going to see some shifting. And so I'm just encouraging parents, you know, consider that. Think about that for a little bit. Um, because you might be able to make some changes in your life. Like, heaven forbid that we go back to normal. I yeah. mean, who here says normal was working all that well? Look, yeah. homeschooled kids score 15 to 30% better on, on uh, scholastic achievement tests. They score better socially as well on the social aptitude tests. And there's a reason. And we know that parental involvement is a, is a prime indicator for academic achievement of the student. Well, when you put those two things together, you know, maybe, maybe this is a wake up call for you and your family to really take a good hard look at what home education might be for you. And there's so many different types of home education. If you go to samsorbo.com, I have a bunch of videos that I've put up online over the past several weeks and more coming out every day that, that talk about the different aspects of home education. So the different, different types of home education, a different way to get the day done with your younger kids or with your older kids or what that might look like. Parents have to understand, we're not recreating school at home. Heaven forbid, yeah. that's not what we wanna do, right? Uh, for younger kids, we're talking K through six, three hours a day tops for academic stuff. Don't burden your kids with a full day. Don't do that, have some fun with them. Maybe you'll discover they, that they have interests that maybe lie outside the academic realm and you can nurture those interests. Things that they otherwise wouldn't have had time for because yeah. they were stuck in school all day. So they're, they're in, in the tragedy, there is opportunity. And so I just want to encourage parents and um, certainly go to coronavirushomeschooling.com, but also yeah. go to my website, dot, dot com, uh, my website dot com, samsorbo.com to, to get empowered, to feel empowered, because that's, that's what I see my job as right now. 
So both on your website and on the, um, the coronavirus homeschooling website, uh, what kind of assets do you have maybe for, for helping to build community? Because I have family members and friends who are homeschooled and they were, their lives were filled with community. And I think for people like me who weren't homeschooled, we want to make that assumption that they don't have community, that there aren't opportunities to build community. Uh, as a homeschooler yourself, how have you seen that that's not the case uh, if, if you make the choice to build community? So I love that you, that I love the term that you use, and I've done 45 interviews so far, and no one has talked to me about building community, and it's mm. such a, it's such an interesting angle on this. The idea with home education is you, you can always supplement your home education. Home education does not mean that you're sitting at home. It just means that it's home guided. It means it's yeah. parent guided, right? Um, par parent guided, I should say. Um, so, so for my kids, you know, we did karate. They had friends who were in public school. And it, interestingly enough, at a certain point, the friendship started to die off because the public school kids were so engrossed in their school and then the after school stuff that, um, that we, we basically stopped, uh, you know, communicating with them for the most part. Hmm. There's a community at uh, coronavirushomeschooling.com and on their Facebook page. Uh, right now, nobody's doing any community stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like everything's online. Yeah. So by all means, avail yourself of the community that's already there online. We as homeschoolers, I can tell you, we are a very embracing group. We love to grow our ranks. We're looking for people. We need people to come, right? Um, I'm part of a co-op. So we meet one day a week. Um, every every week for our school year, and um, the kids sit in a in a classroom setting with uh, an instructor. We call them a tutor uh, because I do classical conversations. Some people might be familiar with that model. It's a seminary, so it's a discussion. It's not a lecture. It's absolutely mm -hmm. not a lecture. It's a discussion. You bring your ideas. Other children bring their ideas and the tutor sort of guides the discussion and there's an exchange of ideas because it's in the exchange that wealth is created. So, yeah. so we, do, we do have that opportunity. Um, and what I would say is, you know, reach out to the other, what I would say to parents right now, reach out to your friends, the, the parents of your children's friends, and find out if you can't start your own sort of homeschool co-op mm -hmm. right now for the fall. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's give this a shot. What do you say, folks? There, yeah. are, there are more and more people who are getting exposed to this. Another thing that they're getting exposed to is what the school's sending home. And partly why I, left, why I left the traditional school with my second grader was because the stuff that she gave me, we, we went on a trip. And when you go on a trip, you have to pick up stuff from the school. You have your child do it. You turn it in. The school gets the money. Everybody's happy. And so I brought that on the trip. And the first day, I put the worksheets down in front of my, my second grader. And he said, oh, mommy, mommy, a uh, uh, teacher says we don't have to do that. We don't have to do this in class. The teacher says so. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, she gave it to me for you to do. So you, you have to do it. Yeah. And then I looked at it and I'm like, this is just, this is busy work. It's no wonder she doesn't make them do it in the classroom. But then I was like, wait, why is she telling me that I have to make him do something that he otherwise doesn't have to do? That makes me the bad guy. Yeah. And I did not appreciate that. And so what I'm saying to parents is you, you have the opportunity to see exactly what your kids are, either what they're doing in class or to see, well, you can just see what the school is sending home. Mm -hmm. If it's actual classwork, maybe it's not, I don't know. I certainly didn't get sent home classwork when we did our sort of version of school, school guided home education, right? Yeah. And I'm just saying, you know, maybe you'll look at that. You'll look at the stuff that you're getting from coronavirushomeschooling.com. And maybe you'll say, wow, I like this a lot better. Yeah. Maybe you'll say, I like the schools better. That's fine too. I'm just saying, let's, yeah. do, let's do a test drive. We've never before had this opportunity to do a compare contrast. Try this, try that. We've never had this opportunity. This is such an amazing time for families and for children and for parents to sort of reconnect. 
And I think that's something that's uh, really profound and awesome about what like coronavirushomeschooling.com is offering and what your website samsorbo.com are offering is uh, here are all of these tools to learn how to homeschool right now because we all have to. And I think it's the, the one time that maybe the country is, uh, is, is okay and maybe endorsing the idea because they have to. Um, what are the silver linings you think that are that are there that and you've mentioned a few um, that that might come out of this when we go back? It, uh, maybe the public school system is is going to look completely different than than it did before. Uh, a lot more parents, I'm sure, are going to be homeschooling than before. So my last question for you is just uh, what's the what's the silver lining in in the assets that you've provided uh, and in this opportunity now uh, to compare and contrast, like you said. Well, the assets that are provided on uh, corona home, coronavirushomeschooling.com is because it's soup to nuts, it really sort of embraces the parent and says, we're just going to help you out. So we've got all the materials you need. All you need to do is bring your love. And the first time I said that, I was like, that's interesting, because I think that that is the key, right, to raising a child. And the, what, what's the one thing that schools can't provide? Yeah. In, basically, right? And I'm not saying that there aren't good teachers out there. God bless the teachers. And they do the very best they can. But we all know that they're overburdened, underpaid, what, you know, it's the whole thing, right? Yeah. And so I just think that the silver lining is that parents might discover their innate ability that goes and beyond, that goes above and beyond what the schools actually can provide. And the, the last thing that I'll say to that is, you know, I no longer ask children what college they're attending, uh, you know, new, new graduates. I asked them mm -hmm. why, why college? Mm -hmm. Because we've been raised, all of us that have gone through the system and the system is, you know, so pervasive, this idea of college prep and career readiness. Yeah. Well, career readiness is a misnomer because goodness knows we have so many children graduating who can't afford to repay their student loans. That's why we've got such a, an issue now with the student loan debt. Um, so clearly it's not career readiness. They're not ready for a career. And by the way, 60% of our jobs in the, in the U.S. involve sales. Nowhere yeah. along that pathway are we teaching sales. So clearly it's not career readiness. So then we have to resort to college prep. So what's college prep? Well, college is very expensive. Prep is we prepare you to go. So we're preparing you to go spend a lot of yeah. money. Yeah. And in the hopes that what? That you'll get a career or a job at least, that will allow you to pay back the money that you borrowed. Well, that's, that's a pyramid scheme. Yeah. So, yeah. so we need to rethink the way that we look at education. And I'm hoping that that is really the upshot of all of this in the long run, is that parents really start to reconsider, what are your aspirations for your child? Are they simply college prep and career readiness? Yeah. Because that's what we've sort of been taught. We kind of accept that. Okay, no, my kid's going to go to college because that's that's just the mantra. Got to go to college. Right. right. Um, yeah. You know, never mind that Bill Gates dropped out. Steve Jobs <laughs> college dropout. Richard Branson never went to college, as far as I know. Like, you know, there there are tons of them that are like right. hugely successful. Yeah. And oh, so those are the outliers. But your child is what normal. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, of course, is Common Core. We could talk about Common Core. I, I don't sure. implement it before it was tested. Uh, now the test scores are showing that it's been a disaster because the test scores are going down, even though they were supposed to be going up. But Common Core, I mean, come on, what parent doesn't want their child to be common? Yeah. It's in the name. Like, why yeah. aren't we thinking about this? How are we just allowing this to proceed as parents who pay their taxes? Yeah. And I think that's the the beauty of uh, if if you can you know the silver lining I guess that you can find in this crisis is there's a lot of opportunities now to step back and to reevaluate like you said okay do I want to continue going down this status quo is that really the the best path is that really the best way forward um, and is that what education should look like and I think this is giving us an opportunity to say well, pump the brakes, maybe this is this is not how we want education to be. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and again, the website is um, coronavirushomeschooling.com uh, and then your website, samsorbo.com, correct? Yes, that's it. So, perfect. Thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk with me. Thank you so much. Much appreciated.